All right. And now, from the court to the courtroom with Jacob Emrani. Okay, we bring on our friend Jacob Emrani. And Jacob, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. How are you? Well, we're okay. It's kind of a tough day, and uh, I'm sure it's a tough day for you as well because you were a friend of Kobe's. You know, really, uh, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you take a whole year, and obviously everybody continues to remember him, and everybody continues to talk about him. Everybody continues to salute him and, you know, remember all the good things about him. But then, you know, today, it just kind of, everything just kind of comes back for all of us. I mean, for all of us, you know, being in a city where he was such an instrumental part of it. And, uh, you know, he had so much to do. I remember uh, when he was getting, uh, you know, his honor at the city hall, I was there. Uh, I was about two rows behind him, and he walked into the city hall, and all of the L.A. City uh, members were all wearing his jersey. And, uh, you know, he was just so, so, so proud of being there, and he was so gracious to everybody. And then after that, you know, a select few of us, you know, had an opportunity to have lunch uh, at the city hall. And, you know, he came in and, you know, he was giving fives to everybody. And most of the people there were city hall employees. And, you know, he was spending time and taking pictures with a lot of them. And, you know, it brings back so many memories. But when you get a chance to be up close and personal and actually see how he is, be- you know, behind you know, the stage where he is behind, you know, the walls. It just kind of really tells you that, you know, we really lost somebody super special, you know, a father, you know, a husband and somebody who really, you know, loved the city and the city loved him back. So, you know, he's gone, but, you know, he will never obviously be forgotten. No doubt. I mean, he, he lives on Jacob and there's not, and I, I th- when I think about him, there's a, there's a lot of you know, great athletes, obviously, that has played many different sports and they go on and they ride off into the sunset. And there are a few that, that feel like they're just getting started when they retire. And he was one of them. Yeah, you know, and I think as you guys just said it, I mean, if you remember, you know, when we talked last year, for me, it's also, you know, very, uh, you know, bitter because, you know, uh, January 26th uh, is, is also, you know, my uh, oldest son Sasha's birthday and you know he turned uh, 13 today and you know he's actually right here standing next to me because I spent the day at home with him today and it was just crazy because when you look at it you know he was such a big Kobe fan like all the young you know basketball players and young kids are but he always used to tell me dad everyone's gonna you know on my birthday everyone's gonna remember that Kobe passed away and you just see you know what kind of an effect that has on people from 85 years old all the way to, you know, kids three, four years old. And, you know, he woke up this morning and, you know, we celebrated him. But then at the same time, you know, it's always conversations about Kobe. And, you know, that's something that, you know, he's going to share, I hope, in good health for many years, but for the rest of his life. Our buddy Jacob and Ronnie is with us, Fred Rogan and Rodney Pete on AM570 LA Sports. Uh, Jacob, when you come on, though, we, we always like to allow you to give our listeners a bit of advice. And can you talk a little bit about the Second Opinion program that you started and what it means? You know, uh, it's actually interesting, you know, just sort of really on a follow-up aspect of helping people. Um, you know, we talk about Kobe and, you know, he helped everybody, you know, and he brought people around happy, made them happy, you know, just by watching what he did for the Lakers and watch him play, you know. Uh, we all should be trying to help people. You know, every one of us have our own roles on how to help people. And, and I started the Second Opinion program a few years ago only for the sole purpose of really trying to help people and helping them know that they can have another voice or somebody else who can help them. Unfortunately, most people's mentality is when you call an attorney, you got to write a check for a couple of thousand dollars before you talk to them. And that's not the case with our office. And the second opinion aspect wasn't really to, you know, tell people that their attorneys are not doing a good job. Very often I tell people if their attorneys are doing a good job, hey, uh, be comfortable He's doing a good job, and if you ever you know, need anything, just let us know. But where we come in, Fred and Rodney, is that when somebody is not having their case handled correctly and they have nobody to go to, it's like the person who you know, is being diagnosed with a God-forbid a disease and doesn't have a right to go to a second opinion. And really, for us as attorneys, uh, we have to tell people what their rights are 
And the second opinion program only started that way is to give people a place to go to without having to worry to pay and have somebody actually confirm everything that's going on or maybe explain a little bit more to them. Often, you know, some of my colleagues are amazing at what they do, but maybe the customer service is not there. or Maybe they don't have time to explain. So, you know, we try to help explain it to them and put them in the right track and make sure that they feel comfortable that attorneys are actually there to help you, not there to hurt you. Okay. You know, Jacob, it's just kind of a tough, I, I got to be honest with you. It's just kind of a yeah. tough day. It really is. Yeah. And uh, I, I know you were affected. Uh, we've been affected. I think the entire market has been affected. And uh, it's like you said, it just brings it up again. You know, the suddenness of someone so young, tragically losing their life. And, and I made this comment earlier, Jacob. Tell me if you agree. You know, in life, we go through chapters. One chapter closes and another opens, and it usually comes with age, transitional periods in life. And uh, the basketball chapter for Kobe had closed, and it was written as well as a book could be written. And the next chapter was opening, and it provided so much promise. And sadly, there just weren't a lot of pages in that chapter. And I think that is what is so devastating to everyone. You know, you're so, so, so right. And you know what's sad is the fact that I think Kobe would have made more of a difference and more of an impact in this chapter that never really got an opportunity to be written because he was out there. Now we know what he was trying to do for women's basketball. We know that, you know, he was getting involved in a lot of other things to help people. And I think Kobe himself had grown up. You know, you just said, you know, there's different chapters and it comes with age. And, you know, when Kobe was playing basketball, there was a lot of people that, you know, didn't feel like maybe a lot of the stuff he did with the media or his teammates or stuff like that, you know, were the best things in the world. But, you know, that had a lot to do with an age. It had to do with somebody who was driven. And as he was growing up, you could, you know, and getting older, you could see how his endeavors, how the next chapters were going to be done. You know, he won an Oscar. Uh, he was getting involved in so much more stuff having to do with the community. And it's just so, so sad because, you know, as a, you know, as a family man myself and you guys, I think we all understand that this was supposed to be the time that his family actually had an opportunity to enjoy him. This was his time to actually spend time with the family. He didn't have to be on the road, you know, five days out of the week. This was his time that after all he did, he was supposed to actually be able to enjoy the fruits of his labor. And, you know, you're absolutely correct. It just, you know, it tears you up to really even think about, you know, he was a superhero and invincible. Nobody would have ever thought it could happen to regular people. But Kobe, that's why we were all shocked when it happened. And I think that's why we're all still, still shocked. And, you know, I find it as an honor. I appreciate that, you know, I'm on with you guys today just to be able to express really what's in my heart and what you guys are doing, are, you know, is incredible for the city because it allows us, all of us, to just kind of try to continue to heal about this. And, you know, God rest his soul. And, you know, we hope that, you know, he's looking down on everybody and him and Gigi are together. And that's another thing. I mean, they were so close with each other and then got to come both together. So it's a very, very difficult time for all of us. You know, I, I do I do want to mention one more thing that, uh, you know, this is Kobe and Gigi, but this is also a day that is extremely difficult for everybody else who also passed away that day. Yeah. And you know, we have to remember them as well, and we have to mention them as well, and we have to give them their dues as well and the respect to them as well. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I, I bring that up, you know, uh, from the bottom of my heart to them and their families that are also continuing to mourn. Jacob, thank you for coming on today. Appreciate it very much as always. Thank you, guys. Thank okay. you, guys. Appreciate you. There goes our buddy Jacob Emrani, and uh, thanks to you for listening. This is it for us today, just an hour. Because we have Clipper basketball this afternoon. So Petros and Money will jump on, take you up to the pregame show with Adam Oslin, and then uh, we'll have the Clippers. Rodney and I will be back tomorrow at noon. Seems like yesterday we used to rock the show.